The moon, that brightest thing in our night sky, is about 400,000 kilometers away. And we know this because astronauts have placed reflectors on the moon's surface that we can bounce lasers off and time how long it takes to get back to us to determine their distance. But did you know that rewind 4.5 billion years ago, when the moon just formed, it was much, much closer, just 20,000 kilometers away. The moon is slowly moving away from us at about 3.8 centimeters per year. And it's already traveled about 380,000 kilometers. That's almost 10 trips around the Earth. The moon is also rusting, but that's not what this video is about. Hey Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Lou, and the moon is shrinking. But should you be scared? Let's discuss. When the moon formed somewhat 4.5 billion years ago, it was likely to have been in a molten state due to the energy released by the impact that led to its formation. Also, you have the decay of radioactive elements within its interior. Since then, it's been cooling, mainly radiatively, through the cold vacuum of space. The moon's lack of a significant atmosphere means there's no insulating layer to trap heat at its surface. It doesn't have a blanket, so it cools much more efficiently than a body with an atmosphere like Earth. Anyway, as it cools, portions of the liquid outer core solidifies. The volume decreases and the moon undergoes a significant contraction, diminishing in size by approximately 50 meters every few hundred million years. This process is akin to how a grape transforms into a raisin when you set it out in the sun. Basically, the moon is super wrinkly all over. However, the moon's surface behaves a bit differently than a grape due to its brittle crust. Unlike the supple skin of a grape that can accommodate the shrinking, the rigid lunar surface cannot stretch without breaking. This leads to the formation of thrust faults. These are distinctive geological structures where segments of the moon's crust are forced upwards, overlapping adjacent areas. These faults represent where the breakage and movement has occurred, with one side being thrust over the other, leading to a change in the topography. The surface expressions of thrust faults are also known as lobate scarps. They're essentially visible cliffs or slopes that result from the movement along a thrust fault. The term lobate refers to their arc-like, lobed-like shape, which is typically convex outwards, resembling a bulge on the surface. These scarps can range from tens of meters to several kilometers in length, and up to tens of meters in height. But since they're a direct consequence of the moon's contraction, they can provide insights into the moon's geological activity and the dynamic processes shaping the moon's surface. The cooling and the contraction of the moon that leads to the formation of thrust faults and lobate scarps also builds up stress in the lunar crust. This stress can then be released very suddenly in the form of moonquakes, the lunar equivalent of earthquakes. Like on Earth, moonquakes can vary in their intensity, but some can be very strong, like five on the Richter scale. Seismic devices have been left on the moon's surface by astronauts decades ago, and since then, many moonquakes have been detected near the locations of lobate scarps and thrust faults. This suggests a direct relationship between these surface features and the seismic activity. It seems like the moon is still tectonically active, even though it lacks tectonic plates like what we have on Earth. Whereas our tectonic plates can be millions of kilometers wide, the moon's faults are typically less than 10 kilometers long and just a few meters high. Thousands of these lobate scarps have been discovered by the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter Camera, LROC, and these cover the entire surface of the moon. 
But when you take a look at their orientations, as indicated on this map by the black arrows, you'll notice something interesting. If these faults are caused by the moon shrinking, it should be shrinking the same in all directions. So you would expect these scarps to be in all directions, but they're not. At the poles, the scarps tend to be orientated perpendicular to the scarps at the equator. It seems that in addition to the shrinking of the moon, the Earth's gravitational pull is affecting these scarp lines. Just like how the moon's pull on us affects our oceans, the tidal forces from the Earth are gently massaging and realigning these scarps. The moon shrinking is believed to lead to shallow moonquakes that occur a few kilometers below the surface of the moon. It's estimated that about 7,000 of these happen every year. But tidal forces are believed to invoke deep moonquakes. These originate hundreds of kilometers below the lunar surface. The Apollo missions predict that the continuous stretching and relaxing of the moon due to the Earth's gravitational pull leads to tens of thousands of deep moonquakes every year. And then you'll also get moonquakes triggered by meteor impacts and from the day-night cycle of the moon as the surface freezes and thaws. The good news is that the rate of shrinkage is incredibly slow, so there's no danger of the moon suddenly collapsing anytime soon. And the deep moonquakes, well, they're predictable. But overall, it is bad news for future lunar astronauts. It seems no spot on the lunar surface is safe from moonquakes, which could cause big problems for future lunar settlements and infrastructure. Establishing a network of seismometers on the lunar surface should be a priority for human exploration of the moon, which is going to happen in just a few years, both to learn more about the moon's interior and to determine how much of a hazard moonquakes will be. But the moon isn't the only place in our solar system experiencing shrinking. Mercury has enormous thrust faults, thousands of kilometers long. So we need to understand seismic activity on these planetary bodies to better prepare ourselves for future planetary exploration missions. Anyway, that's all for this week's video. Thank you so much to my YouTube Perks members for supporting this video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe.